Welcome, my man. It's, it's the What's second up, time that we've talked in like two or three weeks. My yeah, man here, man. Steven Story. Yeah. Uh, we met on Twitter and it took us almost two years to connect. At hey, least man, in video. Too long, man. <laughs> at least in video because we yeah, chatted man, video, before and, and we tweeted oh, yeah. at each other yes. before. But like two or three weeks ago, we, I, I reached out to you and mm -hmm. hey, let's, let's, let's have a quick talk. And we did. And... Mm -hmm. I've learned so much about the things that you do and, yeah. uh, and the skills that you have. And the skills that you have are perfect for the times that we are living right now. Yeah. And yeah. the best thing is that the skills that you can teach us throughout this conversation mm -hmm. can also be applied during good times, during bad times, during horrible times, because yeah. you're going to teach us how to sell and how to find mm -hmm. clients online and how to be... Mm -hmm more charismatic when you're selling oh, yeah. to these people oh, how yeah. to oh, yeah. how to joke around uh, on, into man. their hearts for them to pay you Come Come man, talk, we're talking Come about on. closing two three four five ten thousand dollar deals right now yes so come on man come let's on. get started with that man but first oh yeah tell me a little bit a, a little bit about your about your background how did you get started on, on selling stuff online not not stuff but your services online yeah man so Dude, I started selling. I started selling things back when I was probably thirteen or fourteen. You know, this is back when the That's internet was still young. That's around fifteen years old. That's around yeah. fifty years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, I started selling CDs, and I was serving other people, right? So like, they couldn't get mixed CDs. They couldn't get CDs with all the songs they wanted, but I could because I had fast internet. And so <laughs> I would ask them what they wanted, and then I would go make a CD. And then I would sell it to them for $3, but the CD cost me 50 cents. So I was making $2 and 50 cents each time, you know, I sold a CD and I would sell 50 CDs a week, something like that. And, you know, I'm a, uh -huh. I'm a 13 year old making, you know, 50, 60, you know, I was making what, $150 a week when I was 13. So like, man, that's a lot of money back then. That ain't, that's not bad, man. So, um, um but from there, um, my parents were in sales. My, my, pa my dad sold houses and my mom sold insurance. So mm -hmm. they both had, uh, my dad had a real estate company. My mom had an insurance company. So I got to see them sell all the time every day. Cause I was there. I was, I was there. Like when I, when I got out of school, I would ride with my mom to go do insurance. I ride my dad to do real estate and he, he would sell houses. And so I got to hear what worked and what didn't work because that's how our, our family was supported was through sales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know some people are in insurance or real estate that's watching this guy. And, you know, we have to rely on our sales skills in any time, but especially in this time, right? Because the money did not disappear, guys. The money is still here. It's now that now the people who have high skill levels are going to be the ones who earn it. And the ones who don't have a skill are not going to earn the money. Okay. I just read that the... Uh... I don't know how you call it in the United States, but they just call it the people that manages the money and creates the money. They yeah. just clicked a link on a computer and like $3 trillion mm -hmm. appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> man, I want to buy that computer. <laughs> I on, want the computer man. that you can just click it and put $3, three, $3 trillion. Man, that's so many zeros that I don't know how many zeros. That's like... 30 zeros? I don't even know how much money crazy, $3 trillion money, uh, dollars is. That's a lot of money. Three. And the government just, you know, the United States government just yeah. clicked the link and they have $3 trillion out of the blue. <laughs> Dude, Check there's it out, a man. <laughs> there's a lot of money apples. to be made. That's three Apple companies worth of money. Yeah. All the money that Apple has times three, they did that in an instant. So like, look click. guys, the money is there, okay? So uh, Jose, I'm gonna let you keep going because I'm gonna let you lead me through this conversation. Cause I get excited about this stuff, man. I'm excited already. <laughs> you know, your story about selling stuff when you were a kid reminds me of, of a time that um, I met this uh, my, my well my 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 next door neighbor Edward, his name. He was like the rich guy on the neighborhood, and he has the yeah. he had the only color printer back then, a jet printer. You know, uh, jet color yeah, that yeah. if things get a little bit wet, it just stripped. Down. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah, he owned yeah, the only yeah. jet printer, color jet printer back then, and wow. I said to myself, okay, right now people love Pokemon's, people want mm -hmm. Pokemon's, and I just printed mm -hmm. out like a hundred Pokemon's and <laughs> <laughs> grab like transparent tape and like yeah. put tape on, on both sides like, oh, and create like a a car, a, car, a sticker, and not only that. Cool. 
not only that, that was like the, the cheap offer for one peso, yeah. which was okay. One peso, one yeah. Dominican pesos. But you know yeah. the 3M's double tape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put a little bit in the back and it turned yeah. the card into a, into a sticker. <laughs> Oh, and I man. sold that for five pesos. Okay, I made yeah, so much money that, that I don't know what I, I don't even know what I did with that money. But then I got caught <laughs> for school because I was selling it to my to my, wow. to, my, to, my to my friends, and school yeah. punished me. They punished me. Okay, yeah. Um, and they told me that it's yeah. wrong. You shouldn't do that, and that killed my <laughs> desire to sell. Yeah. Then I started feeling that fear of selling, that took me like mm -hmm. twenty years to remove because. Okay, it seems that selling is bad. At least that mm -hmm. was my thought process because I was like 10 years old, okay? Yeah. When you see that, and my parents never told me that that was neither wrong or good. They just mm -hmm. agree with the freaking school. Even though my parents are like really good at parenting, they fucked yeah. up there, you know? But yeah. that, that sense of fear of getting caught selling a... Yeah made me feel bad for a long time. And I know that a lot of people <coughs> have that fear of selling, not because they were caught when, when, they, when they were kids selling stuff on school, but because the fear of, of, yeah. of, be, of being told no, the fear of missing, yeah. missing the mark, the fear of getting judged, the fear of being laughed at. You know, mm -hmm. some people get laughed mm -hmm. at like, what the hell are you selling me, man? Stop Come on, man. my time. Uh some people are really it. tough yeah so, yeah i got cussed on everything man. yeah yeah so this is a good inter a good way to introduce the topic of fear mm -hmm. and how to get over yeah the, or at least not not over the fear but at least circumvented is that the correct word you know circumvent just, circumvent. yeah circumvent the fear it's yeah. this is the fear it's just like circumvented okay yeah um, man yeah um how do you get over that fear and or at least how do you handle that fear of, of missing the mark? Tell me a little bit more about that. Okay, so I'm going to say a few things, okay? So everybody got notes. If you're writing this down, if you're not writing it down, pull your phone out, uh, type it down on your phone, whatever. But I'm about to give you something that's going to really help this. First of all, one, fear does not go away just by thought, okay? So one, you need sales training, okay? You need to train daily. It gives you confidence. It, that lets you know that I'm not going to stumble over my words. I'm going to get past this objection because I have practiced that. First thing. Second thing you got to understand is, God, would you feel bad for helping a man who broke his leg? No, you wouldn't. Like, if you saw a guy on the road and he broke his leg, you say, hey, I need some help, man. He said, I got you, man. Let me pick you up and I'm going to put you in my car and I'll take you to the hospital. All right? You service that man who had a broken leg. But you have people that have, that have a need for your service that you're that you're trying to service them right it's the same thing they have a big problem you're there to help them you're trying to you're here for the greater good of humanity okay everything that you see has been sold all right excluding humans currently right but we still sell our time so look we're here to serve somebody else so if we focus on servicing how could you be scared to help the man with the broken leg if you're servicing him right so i'm hey look your company's at a hundred thousand dollars. You want to get to half a million dollars so you can support your family. I'm going to help you support your family. That is my service to you. And we're going to have an exchange at the end of this conversation. That takes, that takes the fear out of it, man. So that's, Hey, you don't want me to serve you. That's okay. That no for me doesn't hurt as bad as when I'm like, I got to put food on my table. Mm -hmm. that, hurt, that hurt when I thought about it that way. So we have to, we have to conceptualize sales as service. I am servicing you through my product. I'm servicing you through my service for the greater good of humanity. All right. That's my responsibility. And that's why I want to talk to 80 people a day on the phone. That's why I'm going to send out a thousand emails a day. That's why I'm going to send a hundred Facebook messages, 20 LinkedIn messages. I'm, I'm going to contact as many people as I can every day. So I'm trying to fix their problems. Okay. So when we think about sales guys, think about servicing these people, providing them a solution to a problem. They have, okay. And that's what takes the fear out. So training and re and realigning your mindset. That's that's okay. a good way to to push it to to put it, you know. And I was talking with a copywriter friend. A copywriter is someone who writes the description of the products that you buy constantly on, on, on Amazon. Okay. So the person that writes that description, that sales description, that sales copy is a copywriter. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about mm -hmm. law, I'm talking about text here, about persuasive mm -hmm. text. So this copywriter told me. Uh, something that, you know, actually made a lot of sense. I was, I, uh, uh, 
uh, I paid him to write some copy for me, some text, some sales description for one of my products. And I, I don't remember exactly what I told him, but it was not a good thing about myself. And he told me, look, Jose, people who purchase your product and their life is changed for their products will owe you forever because you are helping them become better. So if anything, you should make your prices higher. You should help sell your stuff at a higher cost. You should never, ever, 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 ever doubt that what you're doing right now for your audience and for your clients, it's, a, it's, if, it's usually life-changing. Because if you believe in the things that you can provide, in the value that you can provide, that, that's me telling me, uh, that's him telling me uh, this thing. Mm -hmm. um, you must really believe that you're actually doing a service to them. You're changing their life with, with your content, with your ideas, with your services, with your products. Mm -hmm. So if you, now this is, for you, the listener, if you ever fear being judged or fear being laughed at or fear being said no to in your face upon your, you know, the request of, of money <laughs> because you want to be paid, think about the following thing. Those people that say no are missing out on the things that you are selling. Because if you truly believe that the, the, the service that you have, the product you have can change someone else's life, not, not, a, like, not like in a huge way, but at least in, a, in one specific way, you need to like promote the hell out of that. And it will be very, 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 what's the name? I'll just use it the bad way. It will be very bad for you not to do so. It will be very selfish of you of not to promote that life-changing service product that you have. Man, mm -hmm. even even sending a stove or a, or somewhere to to cook your 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 steaks can help people change their life. Man, how? Well, it's easy. You have the, the you have the, the 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 pan where you're going to cook the the food that you like, and it will cook it better and faster. You'll save time. Um, you might not feel it's life changing, <laughs> but for the person who purchased that thing right. that they need it and you're helping them save time, which in part changes their life in, a, in a positive way. So mm -hmm. in my case, that's how I got over my fear of, of being said no, you know? So that said, I have two questions for you and it regards, yeah. it's in regards to some of the things that you said. And the mm -hmm. number one is, how do you practice sale? Because you, you, you just told us, hey, you need to practice sale, but how? Okay, so you have a couple ways. One is input. You need to be hearing the correct techniques over and over and over again. So for me, I have a few different resources that I listen to daily. I'll listen to like five, like five hours at a time. I'll just put it in my AirPod. I'll put my AirPods in like, like you have, Jose. I'll put my headphones in. And I'll just listen to, to closing scripts. I'll listen to opening scripts. I'll listen to how to over. Now, but I'm a little more advanced, right? So I, I'm listening to things that they're a bit different for the, the new person, right? If you're new to sales, guys, whether that's on the phone or whether that's, even if it's copywriting, email, whatever, you need to practice with a friend. Hey, Jose, ring, 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 hello. Hey, this is Steven. I'm with Amethyst Consulting. Um, and then you go into your script. And y'all practice for 20 minutes a day. If you don't have a friend that you can talk to, get in front of the record mirror. Record yourself. Record yourself. Because, guys, you need, to, you need to, as we're practicing, you need to know how you sound when you're sitting down. You need to know how you sound when you're smiling. You need to know how you, st how you sound when you're standing up. You need to know how you sound when you're hungry. Because... All these things affect us, right? So you need to write it right down. Okay, look, I did 20 minutes of sales training this morning, and I did 20 minutes of sales training tonight. And I also I listened to one sales video. And out of that video, I wrote down some things I like from my niche or what I do for a living, you know? And so if you continue to do that, what begins to happen, guys, you start remembering little sentences. And somebody says, well, you know, Jose, I think, I think that's a little expensive. I mean, this is what you say then. You say, well, I, I understand and I agree that it is expensive, but right now we're looking at a $50,000 problem, okay? So you're at $20,000 a month and you want to get to $70,000 a month. We're missing out on $50,000 per month, okay? 
So over time, we're looking at what $600,000 we're missing per year. I'm asking for $15,000 down and $5,000 per month to solve a $600,000 problem. So is my solution for your problem, is that bigger than the problem? That's just one way, guys. But you just, but if you keep listening, you can start to back out. You may not be able to have, you don't have, you may have the confidence yet to say something like that, but it's a different way you can approach that. Yes, you know? that's what, that's what I'm going to, to, to tell you. Because it's something that we don't use day to day. We don't talk like that when, you were, when yeah. we are connecting with our business partners or with our friends or with our coworkers. We never tell, we never talk about that in, in that no. way. And no. let me tell you why that works, okay? Um, that's a very good way of using persuasion, what you just told. And even though it's not something that you use in the, you know, in colloquial terms and with friends, mm -hmm. it works in a persuasive way. Why is that? Because of the contrast, okay? When you contrast mm -hmm. the $600,000 that that person is missing out with the $15,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 that your service cost, it actually creates a big gap. And that gap is what persuades people. It's one way to persuade people. That contrast between what they're missing out, which is fear. You're missing out on this thing, on the $600,000. That's mm -hmm. using fear. And using that contrast of a lower, you know, less money, it's actually very persuasive. Okay? Yeah. So while I had never heard uh, uh, that closing statement like that, because I'm not into sales like that, I, I see the technique, okay? Mm. It's using fear of missing the $600,000 and it's using contrast to, yeah. to, um, to close the sale, to persuade. Now, persuasion is not something that always works, okay? No. Some people f uh, uh, say yes, other people say no. The human experience is very broad. So the more Correct. persuasion techniques, the more persuasion tactics you use, the better. And that's a good, and what you said is a good thing hear what listen to what other people are using hop into mm -hmm. youtube and just write sales mm -hmm. script or closing script or clo uh, opening script or whatever and you and you'll find tons of resources oh yeah and you yeah. might say but i don't trust the person in the youtube comment in the youtube video that's okay don't worry yeah. just watch the video and see how you feel yeah. if you mm -hmm. feel something that person is doing something good and yeah. then the, the, yeah. the, that sensation that, that, that you feel, write it down. Mm -hmm. Write it down and write the, the script right next to it. Type it down on your computer yeah. and yeah. use it throughout your sales process. And, and mm -hmm. now, here's the part where I come to simplify it. You don't need to start doing this every day for 20 minutes. Start with five minutes. No. Start yeah. with 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And don't wait to be the best salesman to start selling because oh, yeah. now it's not the time to be worrying about being judged <laughs> now is the no, time of oh, taking man. action okay <laughs> now is the time to take in yeah. action you know yeah. so we have a national action all things right now go to youtube five uh, find closing and opening scripts hear them out and write down the things that make you feel good and right. use that information during throughout your sales your sales script by the way i'm going to link my personal sales script which I sell, but I'm going to link it down below for free. <laughs> so be, be sure to download it while, while you can. That said, now I already have a couple of days of practice hearing out. Let's imagine I have a couple of days of practice already. Yeah. I've heard a couple of minutes of closing scripts and opening scripts. I went into YouTube. I took action upon your, your advice, Stephen. Yeah. And now I'm struggling to find clients. You told me that there's many ways to find clients a couple of minutes ago and that you have to get in the phone and that you have to send a hundred emails, a thousand DMs or whatever. How do you actually do mm -hmm. that? How do you find clients? And you lay yeah. down like a simple process, a step-by-step -step process on how, what you do to find clients, not to pitch them. It's just to find them. Okay. So I'm going to keep it super okay. duper quick, 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 quick thing. It's not finding yep. clients, it's finding prospects. Finding people that you can exactly. sell to, okay? Which is different. Exactly. The client is the one who paid you. Finding mm -hmm. prospects. How do you find yep. potential clients or prospects? Okay, so 
depending on your service, guys, I don't know everybody's services listening, but the first thing I do is I go to everybody who's already marketing. Okay. Those are the people who are spending money, who are sold on the idea of marketing. Okay. Cause they're putting themselves out there guys. So that's if you're doing a business to business, right? Then I'm going to, I'm going to look at google.com. I'm going to type in photographers who need, you know, photographers and I'm going to sell them on lenses. Right. Or I'm going to go with say Yelp. YLP, I'm gonna look for businesses that I can provide my services to. That's one thing. The next thing, guys, if you're selling to people, like let's say for example, you're a photographer and you're selling wedding services, you know, wedding albums. I would get in, I would get in wedding Facebook groups. I would start talking about weddings on Twitter. I would look at wedding websites, go through and look at the people in the comments of those places, guys. The internet, what's so fun about the internet, everybody's on it all the time. Yep. So with a few keywords, you can either attract people like, let's say, for example, on Twitter, if you start talking about weddings and uh, wedding services, somebody's going to start interacting with you that's about to get married because that's just the law of averages, right? Because there's so many people. Then if it's LinkedIn, LinkedIn has hashtags. Instagram has a, Instagram is a goldmine, guys. OK, you click on wedding or wedding, you know, <coughs> uh, uh, soon to be brides or something like that. Or you go to these wedding inspiration pages, guys. You're gonna find people trying to get married in the comments, looking to get married. They're tagging their spouse or soon-to-be spouse in the comments. Hey, I saw that you uh you like this thing, this such and such. Are you uh getting married soon? You send a DM. You just ask a question, a simple question. Hey, are you getting married soon? If you're into cars and you, you're trying to get people to, you know, you're trying to work on older cars or something like that. There's people who have pages dedicated to that on every social media platform guys and all you're going to do is say hey i see that you have a 2017 mustang would you like to get a new exhaust system put in there i can do that for you or i can sell that to you i can sell that system to you i'm giving you all two examples but you're getting the, you're getting my drift guys start looking at the keywords on social media platforms talk about it talk about your service and then just send somebody a simple dm guys you don't have to sell them in the first interaction Hey, I noticed that you said such and such about this. Congratulations for getting married or, or, or getting engaged. <coughs> huh? So, so you could just start a conversation with the person. Hey, yes. congrats on your engagement. You, you don't yeah. know me, but you know, it's good. I'm just wanted to con congratulate you. Try yeah. not to be creepy, but uh, yeah. it doesn't matter if you come out, come out looking creepy because it's still a cold, direct message. It's, exactly. it's to it's someone that doesn't know anyway. who you are. It's still a little bit creepy, no matter yeah. when, what it, no matter, you can have the best DM script ever. And it still will yeah. be a little bit creepy because people don't know you, but you have to get over that. Correct. You have to get over Correct. that. So you just told us a, a great way. Find the keywords about the services that you're trying to provide. Mm -hmm. Find the people on social media, LinkedIn, go and even on Google, Instagram, Twitter, and just DM YouTube. them some what oh, yeah. something 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 as simple as hey i noticed you have the that, that car man i love those cars and yeah congratulations by the way uh, I, I i my name is jose rosado i do this this and that um and i have a trans uh, uh, what's the name that you said an exhaust system for, yeah exactly. specifically yeah. for your car yeah would yeah. you like to talk a little bit more about that schedule a car yeah, with me yeah, right yeah. now it could be yeah. more let's say straightforward like that or you could just be a little bit less salesy, okay? Just saying congratulations on this, this, and that. It's great to connect with you. My name is Jose. We love the same things. Good, good, good to meet you. And then a couple exactly. of days later, you follow up with the, with the script to sell them. Exactly. So we now have one way of finding clients. Going into, into the different keywords on, on, on different social medias and DMing people. What mm -hmm. other tactics can you show us on how to find a, prospects and, and potential clients. Okay, so the next thing, guys, is producing content about what it is that you're selling, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you DM that person, they did not respond, but they went to your profile, because we always go and look at the person's profile. What you're going to yeah. be talking about is the things that they're interested in. Okay, so if you're, so we're going to keep, we're going to stay on this wedding photographer thing, okay, Jose? So, you're a wedding photographer, guys. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna post some of your previous work. You're gonna talk about how, how fun it was working with John and Susan, okay? And you're gonna talk about how your book 
for the next couple of weeks, but you have some openings in April. And if anybody wants to hit you up to contact me here, but you're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep talking about what it is you do and you want to educate, inform, well, and entertain, right? So those three things right there. If you're contacting people in the DMs and you're constantly putting out content, not, not generic content, guys, put your personality in it. Okay, you need to give a damn about what you're putting out there. But if you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to get traffic. Okay, people are going to start coming to your, your profile, seeing your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your YouTube, your Twitter. What is Jose, the wedding photographer, talking about? You know what? I've been watching this guy. He actually sent me a message a month ago. Hey, Susan, let's, let's go talk to Jose. I know I didn't respond to him, but let's, let's talk to him about that because I think he knows what he's doing. Yep. That's a good, way, a, good, a good way to start providing value also. So you are Correct. educating, you're entertaining people, and you're providing value through that education um, posts that you're posting on your social media. And it also, here's something else that that thing also does for you. It yeah. sets you as an authority in people's mind. We're when, thinking the same thing. Yep. When people see you <coughs> posting stuff about X, Y, or C, let's use the, the wedding photographer, as, as the yeah. example, and let's just keep yeah. it there to make it simpler to understand. Yeah. Um, if people see you posting about what to do before a, a, a wedding photo shoot or what to do after you got married for, for, for photos or yeah. what to do before or whatever, yeah. what, what clothing to mm -hmm. use, where to find the best mm -hmm. makeups, if people see you mm -hmm. posting about that, mm -hmm. okay, they will start perceiving you as an authority. And authority mm -hmm. is one of the tenets of persuasion. Think about cool. the following thing. When you want to purchase something that's outside of your domain of knowledge, let's say that you want to buy a, a printer. Nah, that's something more and more, more hard. Um, you want to buy a router system that works in your full home, your whole house, yeah. but you have yeah. no idea which to buy. What did you, what did you do? You go to your, to your friend, the Uber geek. Hey, Uber yeah. geek, which router system should, should I buy? And Uber Geek will tell you, it's not called router system. It's called this, this, and that. And here's the one yeah. that I recommend. Yeah. You, my friend, will surely buy that one, even though you have no idea exactly. what that person know. is talking about. Yeah. Why? Because you trust that guy as an authority in, in geekiness, in geekdom, yeah. in, in whatever the guy is, <laughs> in whatever yeah. you're asking to him. So mm -hmm. the same thing happens when you see someone posting online. Mm -hmm. you, you, you feel, you start feeling that person is a, an authority on that, on that right. topic, specifically right. if you agree with that person, okay? Mm -hmm. So another actionable advice for you guys right now, if you have a skill, start talking about that skill online and how to develop it. Start mm -hmm. talking about how your skill can make other people's life better or how, mm -hmm. or how you've made other people's life better with your skills. Okay. Well, yeah. So we yeah. have more actionable advice right now on, on how to start promoting yourself. Now, it takes a little bit more time to find clients with your scripts, with, well, with, with, your, um, with your content, con creating yeah. content online. Right. But this is a long-term strategy. Okay. So that said, I want to talk about shorter-term strategy, like finding emails uh, and that kind of things. So let me know about how you do that. How do you find emails and how do you send emails to people? All right, so I know how I do it. I know how a few other people do it. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to get technical, or do you want me to just surface level this? Let's so let's start with the with a broad brush, <laughs> and then we go. We start talking about the details. All right. So first things first is getting emails. So um, to save time, and this is not free, okay? Because either you're gonna spend time looking up individual emails, and it's gonna take you all day every day. Mm -hmm. or you're going to buy a list service. Okay. Uh, and so what you're going to do is, I'm sorry, I got a text message, guys. Uh, you're going to buy a list service. So I use D7, the letter D, the number seven, leadfinder.com. That's what I use. Now that's the business. With that being said, if you're doing a business to you as a business to a consumer, you need to have, you need to find a web scraper or email scraper. And it's going to go through and scrape uh, like Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook groups, things like that. This is not a free service. Okay. 
uh, Jose. Uh, so let, let me let me define scraper. Scraper is something that okay. finds stuff for you. Okay, it's a little bit technical, but it's just a software that finds stuff for you. Scrapes looks around the internet finding stuff for you. That's a scraper. Right, right, right. Sorry about that. Um, so <clears throat> in the name of time, you do not want to go looking for emails on your own. Okay. So you want to find a scraper or you want to purchase a list service. Like D7 you, lead finder. Like D7 lead finder. You can, you can Google it guys, a list service, and you can find some that they'll, they'll give you like a matter of fact, I'm sorry guys. D7 lead finder has a free version. that will give you 50, uh, contacts per day for free. Nice. Okay. Nice. And a lot of these things have trials as well, guys. So like if you don't have the money, you might have a seven day trial. So just look that that goes for the scrapers as well as the email list. Um, but what I found is, um, by doing a lot of mass contact, you are just looking for two or three people to show interest. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. You don't need everybody to say yes. We don't get rich by everybody saying yes. We only need a few people to say yes to us. Yes. Right. That's so, um, I, I, um, but, but this brings me to my next point, Jose, which is this guys, we have to cover up people in contact. Okay. So somebody might have a Facebook, a LinkedIn and an Instagram. They don't check their LinkedIn and they don't check their Facebook, but they check their Instagram. So send them a message on all three. Okay. If they're going to say no, say no three times. Yep. You know? Yep. Because the first time they don't even know who you are. The second, hey, that's that guy from uh, LinkedIn. The third time it's like, hey, that's the guy from Facebook. <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Right. And so it all just depends, guys. But again, this all depends on the service you're providing, right? So if you're a business to consumer person, mm -hmm. don't do that, okay? <laughs> if you're a business to business person, you might want to cover them up in contact, okay? But the main thing is that you want to be prospecting every day in multiple ways with a, at a large number. Like my mm -hmm. goal every day is anywhere from 1500 to 1800 people need to see my offer between phone calls, emails, and all my social media platforms. Yeah. That's a, that's a great approach, man. And using that D7 lead finder, I've used it before. Let mm -hmm. me, here's a caveat. Mm -hmm. Some of the emails will just don't work. Some of them. Yeah. It bounce. Yeah. And, and those that were, uh huh. The correct words, the, the emails will bounce, but that's not the main thing. The main thing is starting to get comfortable with sending those emails. Okay. That said, mm -hmm. let's imagine that now I have, I've already started creating content, really simple content for my social media accounts. Mm -hmm. I'm already practicing the sales thing by watching YouTube videos. I already learned how to find emails using the yeah. seven lit script. Mm -hmm. And you can also find it on, on, on places near you on Google maps and just start copy pasting. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. another way to do it. Yeah, it is. The, I call it the lazy man's way of finding clients. Just go to it Google is. Maps, places near you, <laughs> and Let's copy go. paste all the freaking emails Let's that go. you sent. And if you don't find the emails, find the phone and call the, the secretary. Hey, mm -hmm. with whom can you give me the email of the person that is in charge of marketing? People, you, secretaries usually, usually say yes because they don't want to be, yeah. you know, they're used to that. So that's yeah. the the. the the, the lazy man's way of finding a client. Um, that said, we now have all those emails. What am I going to send those? What am I going to send to these people? I mean, oh, okay. are, they are called emails. They're called process. They don't even oh, yeah. know who the hell I am. So yeah. how am I going to approach them? Well, me a little bit more about that. Through you emails. got a few ways. Not through emails. Okay. So you got a few different ways and this is where the, the large numbers come in at guys, you want to test a few ways because sometimes it's one sentence that you're saying that they don't like and they don't respond. Mm -hmm. All right. So for me now, Jose, you might be a little bit stronger on emails than I am. I'm really bad. I'm much better on the phone, but I'll, I'll say something like, Hey, look, I don't know you and you don't know me, but the reason I'm emailing you is because we can get you 20 to 25 new X, Y, Z. If this even remotely interests you, just shoot me a message back that says yes, and let's hop on the call together and see if we can talk more about this. That's one good way to do it. So now, caveat. Some people will find that too, too <coughs> let's say, like harsh or too... Uh, oh, yeah. Let me say, I, oh, I don't yeah. know how to yeah. say it, but they, they just some people don't it's like aggressive. being sold at because that's aggressive. If you yeah, want to do this, yeah. find me. And that's okay, 
Okay. Some people like that. Other people don't. Now it's another way. Now you got other ways too now, right? You can be real like, Hey, my man, how are you? Good to meet you. Whatever. Yeah. Let me give you an example of that. Yeah. This is a uh, a really short uh, email that I sent. I haven't, I I even haven't mostly memorized. So you just go, it it takes a little bit more time to craft, but it's more Mm -hmm. personalized. It's more, uh, more, let's say, warm it's a warmer way to approach yeah, people yeah. and this is the way um yeah. we have the, the cold way hey i have this pay me or let's talk and here's yeah. another way a warmer way to approach that both of them are good ways there's no good or bad thing right here in this in this in this mm-hmm. context okay so mm-hmm. the warm way is like hey I, I was looking through your website i loved your blog post about x y or c especially the part about X, yeah. that's a very powerful thing that you said there. By the way, my name is Jose. Uh, I work with companies such as yours. You can just tell the, the industry. I work in the wedding industry and I help businesses like you or people like you uh, take better pictures, create lasting memories with, 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 we're using the example of the wedding. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Create lasting memories and also uh, record videos that are just beautiful to have and to share with your family. Uh, I noticed that you are going to get married or whatever. Um, I would like to have a, a quick call with you uh, to talk about, you know, taking the pictures mm-hmm. of your of your wedding. Click here to schedule a phone, a fifteen minute mm-hmm. strategy call, fifteen or ten minute strategy call. Okay, and if they don't if they don't click or they don't set the meeting or they don't reply, you follow back at least four more times. Yeah, yeah. Follow. I want to talk about that in a while. Following, follow following, following up is a hassle. Yeah, but it it's the it's even more important than finding the emails mm. because people usually reply after the th- second, third, sometimes even on the fourth email that you sent them. Mm-hmm. And in the last email, the fifth one, it's just like an ultimatum. Hey, I noticed that you haven't replied to my email. So if you don't reply to this, I just assume that you don't want my my offer. But if you're still like interested in at least having a, a quick call, click here, and I, I, I won't I won't bother you anymore. Something like that, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are two ways to approach people um, that have no idea who you are. You you are either upfront, hey, if you want to make X without Y, schedule a call with me. I help people with this, this, and that. Bam, mm-hmm. different story. Or the warm way. Hey, I, I noticed that you have a great blog post about X, Y, or C. I learned this, this, and that. Beautiful. Loved it. By the way, my name is Jose. I help people with X, Y, and C. Uh, if you would like to learn a little bit more about X, you know, the pain point of that person, schedule mm-hmm. a, 15, a free 15 minute strategy call with me. Bye, mm-hmm. Jose. So there's, there are two ways. Those are the two ways. And of course, there are tons, tons of oh, yeah. copy-paste scripts that you can find on, on Google or whatever that you just copy-paste and change a little bit. So you don't have to produce mm-hmm. this content uh, that you're going to send to these people by your own. You just right. find the ones that make you feel something that you say, oh, that I like that. Because you need to also feel comfortable with what you're, with what you're doing. And then you just change some right. of the and then you start sending that every single day to everyone. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. We talk, we've talked about a lot of things right now, Stephen. So mm-hmm. that said, let us end into a, like a bird's eye view of your full process. Okay. How do, okay. like step, just step by step. We don't have to define each of them. It's just a bird's eye view. I start every morning at this. I do that. I send 10 emails. I close 10 deals. I, just a bird's eye view. Tell me. Okay. So first things first, your day starts at night. Okay. So you're going to schedule your day. If you're not scheduling your day, you're scheduling your week because you got to start, you got to finish the day so you can start it. So basically I'm going to do is I'm going to do a review of what I did the day before. And then I'm going to say, okay, I need to do this and this the next day. I go to sleep. I wake up. I try to be rested because when you're selling, you need your brain. Okay. You need brain power, man. Yes. And so, what I found is I'm not in a good mood when I'm not getting enough rest. So get some good sleep in. Wake up. I read. Okay. The more you read, guys, the better you're going to be able to write and the better you're going to be able to speak. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you something else, guys, on the, on the topic of reading. The higher your vocabulary, 
the more money you make. Okay? Jose, am I right or am I wrong? Let me rephrase that. The better you convey your ideas, the more mm -hmm. money you'll make. And having a huge vocabulary helps you convey better ideas. Come on. Come on. So, all right. So, that's, that's the next thing. So, I read every day. Then the next thing after that, guys, I go into some form of sales training. So, either I'm listening to sell or I'm hopping on a role play call with one of the guys, like one of my friends that also are in sales. We're going to do 20 minutes. He'll do, we'll do some role play back and forth. Role play is when we're practicing, okay? He's the customer. I'm the salesman. I'm the customer. He's the salesman. All right. And we learn. You're the teacher you know, and how, he's the, the college student. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. And so we'll do some role play. Then from there. Now, this all depends on how your day is set up. Okay. But either you can start out doing your, your cold contacts early in the day. Then from there, you do some follow up stuff. You mm -hmm. might have five or six people you need to call, uh, follow up with. They're not always going to answer the phone or respond to your emails, okay? So that could be a 45-minute situation or it could be a 10-minute situation. You know, you follow up. And then from there, guys, am I doing my Facebook messages, my LinkedIn messages, my Twitter messages, you know, all the social media DMs? And then from there, produce some content for the day mm -hmm. ab ab about your niche, okay? So, like, on LinkedIn, I'll go in and I'll talk about what I'm providing to people on LinkedIn. Then I'll say the same thing on Facebook. Then I'll say the same thing in an e email. I'll say the same thing in a, you get what I'm saying, guys. <coughs> and then here's the next thing, guys. And you know, I, I, Please don't forget this. You have to review your actions. You don't know what you're, what's really working unless you're reviewing. Hey, when I tried this script, I was able to get through the gatekeeper, the, per the secretary, the receptionist. Or when I said this script, they blocked me, <laughs> you know. So once we continue to review, guys, we're going to refine what works and what doesn't work. And then we also begin to refine our skill because then mm -hmm. we see, okay, when I was sitting down talking like this, nobody wanted to talk to me. And I was also hungry that day. And I also had a bad night the night before. But when I sat up or when I stood up and made my calls, I, I sounded happier and more, I had more energy. Yeah. Now, and I, I called right after lunch and I felt great. Okay. I, I write that down. And then, 30 days from now, 60 days from now, I'm a much better salesman, okay? So that's, that's, that's mainly what I'm doing every day. And I'm, I'm focusing on, and one more thing, guys, focus on your words and how you can make your words bring that person to where you're trying to go, okay? Mm -hmm. I call it like using a frame, right? You want to frame the conversation up with your words, and you're going to let them fill everything up. You want them to talk. Okay. You don't know their problems unless they're talking. Me and Jose are talking back and forth, but if me and you were talking, I want you to talk the most, not me. Cause that's how we service guys. Remember we're yes. servicing them, not selling them. So frame the conversation up. This is what we're going to talk about. And then you let them talk within the frame. Yep. Okay. And yep. you do, if they want to talk, let them talk, man. There's no need to rush. Yep. Okay. So that said, um, which tips do you have for people like who are in a bit of a hurry to, to find clients online? Okay. So first things first, guys, you need, you need to train today. Okay. So if that's a YouTube video, that's you writing something down from what me and Jose have told you today, you need to write something down, practice. You have 10 minutes today, practice for 10 minutes. And then you need to send one email, make one call, send a DM, send a, a private message. Yes. today yes okay and then here's the thing guys what you need what you need to do after that you need to practice some more tonight when you finish here's the next thing guys you need to know when you can prospect and when you can't if you're calling people you can't call people at 11 o'clock at night and you can't call them at six o'clock in the morning correct okay so if i know that from nine to about four o'clock is my the sweet spot for when I can talk to people. I need to set my day up so my emails and my private messages and my LinkedIn messages and my calls happen within this nine to four period. Yes. I I, I do my reviews before nine and after four. You see? But the but the nine to four time is what we call platinum hour. Platinum hour, guys. These are sacred hours when prospecting is going on. Okay. 
So you don't want to be distracted when you're prospecting. If you're making cold calls, sit down, make 20 calls, and don't get up. Don't use a bathroom. Yeah, don't answer batch, any calls. Batch your work. That's a great productivity trick. <coughs> Matching yeah. the same things and just doing it right. like in one sitting. Great, great, great tip, man. Zone. Yeah, and then the next thing, guys, um, you need to know how you feel, okay? Because sales will beat you down, okay? So you need, to be, you need to be listening to positive things. Do not let yourself get physically hungry. Okay, you start getting really hungry, what's gonna happen is your body's like, I'm not feeling so good. And this other person just told me no for the 30th time. Now you feel like crap, and you're like, oh man, I just, today was a bad day. Go eat some food, okay? <laughs> Get some food. Grab a sneaker. <laughs> yeah, grab a snicker. You not like yourself when you're hungry, right? But, that, but, but our brain uses so much power during that time when we're selling, we're prospecting, you know? So you gotta keep your, pay attention to your body, guys. Okay, and pay attention to your emotions. Okay, and you need to also pay attention to your energy levels. All right. Um, the next next tip I got for y'all guys, other than training every day, batching your work. I use a timer. Okay, I don't know about you, Jose. I use a five minute timer. I use a fifteen minute timer because my my attention span isn't super super strong. I'll set a timer on Google.com. I, I type in timer, and then t uh, Google actually has a little little block. And you can just type in how much time you want. You click on it, and then the alarm will go off. <clears throat> so, for example, you're scared of making cold calls. So this is what you do. I'm going to call as many people as I can in five minutes. And when it goes off, I'm done cold calling for the day. Or I'm done prospecting the emails for the day. I'm done sending LinkedIn messages or hmm. Facebook messages or whatever. That's a great tip for not people minutes, out. Yeah, who are starting out. Great tip. You know, Love it. And that's another way to conquer fear. That's another way to conquer fear, guys. I'm only going to do this for five minutes. Okay, in five minutes, I can knock out four people. Okay, I called four people today. I, I did it. I did it. I won. You know, and so that's the next tip, guys. But um, mindset is, is king of this. You have to stay positive. So you got to read things as positive. You got to listen to things as positive. You can't just listen to music. Okay, you can't just listen to sales either. Listen to things that's going to make you feel good. Yeah. All right. If you do Especially that. Especially now, man. Oh, yeah. If you start reading uh, the news feed and, and Twitter, whatever, and it's not new, it's been happening for years already, you'll yeah. get depressed just from reading all the bad news that's happening around the world. And to be honest, bad news are usually uh, less, less, um, they don't happen as, as much as you think. But the news Correct. makes a lot of money talking about bad news. People online make a lot of money talking about bad news because people yeah. are attracted to conflict. So yeah. a quick word of advice, find a way to block all that negativity mm -hmm. without, without forgetting about the world, of course, and yeah. focus more on the uplifting part of the internet. Mm -hmm. Because uh, just think through what, what has happened in the last few weeks and how, how you felt after you started reading tons about all the things that's ha that, that are happening around you. Mm. You will certainly notice a huge difference in your mood. Mm. Okay? And when you start hearing about what's, ha what's going to happen in the future, and that future is, uh, uh, how do you call this? It's a death, uh, death scenario, let's call it like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the walking death scenario, let's call it like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You will start feeling different. So you must actively yeah. avoid negativity. And sometimes you will find yourself going into, into a website of news, trying to find news about what's happening around you because you have to be informed. No, you don't have to be informed about that. Your mission right now and always is to find ways to one, provide value to yourself by selling and making more an extra income. And second, providing value to others through your services and your products. That's your main goal. And that should be your only goal of every day. And having that goal will help you reach that freedom that you want. If you're able to close a sale or two or three or whatever every single day or every couple of weeks, that's enough. So think about yep. the following thing. You close four deals of $5,000 this month. You might not close it in, uh, in one week. But let's say that the last week of the month, you close those four deals. That's an extra $20,000 that mm -hmm. you didn't have. $20,000 can help you live 
for a couple of months without worrying about mm-hmm. money. So mm-hmm. think about what you can sell for a higher price, let's say mm-hmm. two, three, four, five, even $5,000 and sell that. Now, if you don't feel comfortable selling a, such a high price product or service, start with something that, cost, that, that you can sell for a thousand or two thousand dollars. Businesses don't mind investing a thousand or two thousand dollars on anything. Mm-hmm. They, they, don't, they don't care. It's, oh, two thousand dollars for that? Here, here's the money. Where right. people start thinking, oh, that's a lot of money, is after the $5,000 mark. That's where people yeah. start like, oh, that's a lot of money, especially if you're selling to small businesses. Okay? Mm. So mm-hmm. that said, um, we've given you really practical advice on how to start practicing your sales. We've given you a really, a really fast way of finding leads using the D7 lead finder or just going into Google Maps and finding places near you and copy pasting the emails. Mm-hmm. We've given you two ways of approaching people that have no idea who you are. A cold way, a very upfront way, and a warmer way, talking about them, about what they provided to you, okay? We've talked about finding closing and opening scripts on YouTube, which will help you understand a little bit better about the things that we're talking about. Now, we didn't get into like the actual script that you can, you know, just do when you're on a phone call with someone or a video conference like this. But I will mm-hmm. link that uh, my personal, my personal closing, my personal script that I used to close my web design and my mentorship. I use the same script for both because it's very flexible for free down below. Okay. So that said, where can where can people find you, my man? In social media, um, email, Twitter is the best the, the tw- Twitter is the best place to find me right now just because that's where I'm most active at um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't really do any other social media network for these types of things so if you want to find me guys it's S-T-E-P-H-E-N S-T-O-R-E-Y that's my mm-hmm. name on Twitter shoot me a message follow me uh, I'll be more than happy to help you uh, I've hopped on some calls with some people from Twitter practice some uh, sales training with them we did some role play together so I'm always down to do that guys um Probably by the time y'all see this, I'm going to have a, a course on this. It'll be first 10 people will be free. I think I'll do a little code for, 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 for the people watching this uh, that y'all can use. I'll give it to Jose, and then y'all can get like half off. It'll be cheap. It'll be like $25 or something like that. So uh, it won't be really hard for you. But, guys, look, you're sell- we all need sales skills. Guys, look, it's a book. Every job is a sales job. That's the book <laughs> I'm reading right now. Every Every job is a sales job, okay? So look, we all look, either you're gonna sell people on you and the services you can provide them at work, or you're gonna sell them a product or service, right? Or you're gonna sell them your time, right? Or the, the knowledge you have, okay? So look, in times like this, guys, we have to, we have not because it's a skill that we're lacking. So let's get the skills necessary to win, okay? Now that you have some knowledge, guys, now you're responsible. Yeah, that's, here's the hard part now. You didn't know this before. Now you know it. So if you're having yep. problems, you got to come back, look at your notes, dive deeper into this, and, and use these skills, guys. The top 20% of any industry makes 80% of the money. Where do you want to be? You want to be in the 80% that makes the rest? And that's fighting over the 20%? Or you want to be in the 20% of that industry that's making all the money? And, we, and one of those skills we need, guys, is sales, okay? Sales will help you now. And will help you forever. The day I gave my, uh, mm-hmm. the day that I, let's say, put aside my fear of being judged was the day that I started making more money. And you know what happened to me? I got fired like a dog and I had zero <laughs> money and I was around $100,000 in debt. That's like 5 million pesos. 5 million pesos is, uh, is still a lot of money. Yeah. And $100,000 100, is also a lot of money anywhere in the world. In the world. Mm-hmm. And my wife was pregnant with my first kid. And she had recently quit her job. So we were both jobless. <laughs> oh, Zero money oh, in the God. bank account. And, but I still had my, my skills. Web design, uh, graphic design, and other stuff that I do. Mm. And here's what happened. Oh, you just came in. in, in yeah, my, cell phone my, too. my computer's about to die. So, so I was yeah. like, let me just have so, on my phone. So that said, um, when I found myself without anything, I just said to myself, oh, screw this fear. 
and I started selling and started sending offers to my to my potential clients, and uh, I solved my issue like in one month, just because I started prospecting and finding clients because I gave up on my fear of being judged. So this is the perfect time to start doing that. Start finding that inner power that you have inside of you and start making as much money as you can by providing value to people outside of your scope of, of, of influence. How? Finding people online. So that said, Steven, thank you so much for taking the call. Oh man, we posted welcome, this man. really, really, really soon. And just send me all the links to your stuff and I'll gladly I'll post them on, on, on the YouTube channel. Thank I'll you, will, man, for and sure. see you soon. Hey, thanks, guys. I hope y'all got something from this. Let's take action, and uh, uh, I'll look to hear from some of y'all soon. See you. See you next time. See y'all.